the Dusty Futon Podcast is a product of the Dusty Futon LLC and Dusty Futon Productions. Go to DustyFuton.com for more information. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dusty Futon Producers Corner, where we have Dirty Disciple of Noise Cartel Records as our host. And this episode is brought to you by Backstage360.com, the musician's media. The Dusty Futon is a musician's podcast, bringing you the raw musician and what they bring to the table. Backstage360.com works hard to bring you even more with creative write-ups, professional interviews, and stunning photography. Full disclosure, I do contribute write-ups and reviews and and conduct interviews for them occasionally. Backstage360.com also assists with the promotion of events, products, tours, new music, and they provide an overall insider's peek into the impedimenta of the backstage. Backstage360.com, they truly are the musician's media. And in this episode, we talk to a guy named Raul Irock Rios. He's kind of an underground producer that Dirty Disciple actually knows and has worked with. He talks about the four elements of the hip hop culture and kind of breaks them down from a personal perspective, which is really awesome if you're as ignorant about the hip hop culture as I am. Let's go ahead and take a seat with these guys and learn a bit about producing and DJing. What are we doing? (laughs) We can roll. Are we ready to roll? Well, I I just, I hit record before. I I learned many years ago, always (laughs) press record, APR, you know. You so I hit the right guy. As soon as they came in, I hit record. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, so, welcome back to the Dusty Futon. My name is Dirty Disciple. I'm here with Big John. Yeah. And guest on the show today is Raul Irock Rios. What's up, man? Yo, what's going on, man? He's Thank chewing you for gum. Me. That's an uh, engineer's what? nightmare. What happened? <laughs> 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 Who's chewing gum? <laughs> My tongue is a little rubbery right now. Just... Oh, okay. That's what that was. <laughs> and you're here with uh, Paradox? Yeah. What's, What's going, going on? on? What's going on, man? Thanks for Thanks coming for in. Me. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Raul is a uh, producer of electronic music, a little bit in the underground scene. Um, he, he's very active in the scene. Uh DJing all around the place. So you pretty much kind of nailed it. Um, I mean, I started when I was around 17 years old. Um, <clears throat> ever since then, I just kind of took off. And what really caught my eye was the underground scene. And, you know, just opportunities just started opening up for me. And I just kind of took it from there, took the bull by the horns. What got you started in, in producing and what you do right now? Um, actually, one of my friends... He was more on the producing end of it, and I guess it raised curiosity on what I love to do in DJ, like how it was made from scratch. And um, like scratch, like well, that's what I started off doing first because my brother was a break dancer. Okay, and, you know the oh, really like yeah. the like the cardboard on the floor yeah. and <laughs> swinging around on your head. And exactly, shit. I always admired that stuff. <clears throat> Me too. I wish I could do that, but I'm not that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I always looked at the four elements of hip hop. You know, you got the tagging, you got the dancing, you got the DJing, then you got the um, rapping, which is actual hip hop. So, can you ex- of- go into more detail about those four? Because I don't think everybody knows those. If it's, I mean, in the hip hop culture, they know. You know, in the hip-hop okay. Culture. How about let me rephrase that? People like me are fucking morons when it comes to hip hop <laughs> so and producing. So explain four, it for the three. The four years. elements is what creates the culture. Uh-huh. So one being the tagging. You know, you go out there and do your little piece. You um, mean spray painting? Yeah, like, spray painting. You know, mm-hmm. violating public property. Well, uh, at, with the, at the hip hop shows, they have spray like spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> at the hip hop shows, I mean, some people take it to another level. Yeah. But at the hip hop shows, that's what you have. You have the DJ, um, while the DJ's playing, you have the dancers, then you have the performers, and then you, every now and then you have the lyricist. Yeah, I've been to a lot of shows where they'll, they'll put up a blank white paper on yeah. the walls, and people just go at it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's what keeps hip-hop alive. It's more of a culture. See, that's the thing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rocker. I'm a musician, and, and it's, very, it's a very different culture in any type of music format yeah. than what you're describing. I've never been a part of this. Yeah, and then there's the pop world, which is the rap. Ah. That's how it kind of separates. So anyways, <laughs> make a long story short. <laughs> <Too late>. uh, <laughs> my brother was like the break dancer and I always wondered about the guy scratching in the background. And I got the opportunity to meet a DJ who embraced me to learn and it kind of went from there. And from there, I had the opportunity. One of my good friends was more in the producing world and I got to really look at what I like to do, how it's made. 
And I kind of just went from there. Nice. Yeah, so I got to break it down into detail. And were you DJing before you started producing? Yes, I started as a DJ first. And then- I actually started as a hip-hop DJ. How did that like build into what you're doing now? Like, so, I, the, yeah, sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. So the thing with me was uh, going back to my brother, the hip hop culture. So that was my focus to be, you know, a scratch DJ, do competitions and stuff like that. But the DJ who actually taught me was a house DJ. So he introduced me to this whole new world I never knew existed. And I fell in love with it. I still did my hip hop thing. I still know how to scratch and tricks here and there, but it just it just took me to another level, the electronic scene. I fell in love with it. The the culture is very positive. Uh not that the hip hop isn't, but you know, there's there's a couple of black sheep everywhere. But just in general, I just fell in love with EDM, you know. That's how I kind of drifted over to that. And um when you're DJing and stuff, <clears throat> do, do you produce like remixes and uh, your own type of style and then perform that or are you just playing tracks that you got from the internet like downloaded a little bit of everything i mean i've been blessed to know a lot of producers before they release stuff they send it to me and you get to play it out sometimes they release it sometimes they don't so it kind of makes you at the end of the day it kind of makes you unique you know it's kind of like it reminds me of the record shopping days you go to the record store and they only order like 10 presses of one song and if you're part of the you know the, the 10 that bought it then that's that's it Nobody else is going to have that song. So it kind of separated you from everybody else. Hmm. And uh, so how long have you been making music? Since 2008. And it's just what I love to do. It's like my hobby. I feel like I found what I love to do. I, I see myself being 80 years old, probably still doing the same thing, no matter where it takes me. You know? Oh, yeah, some you... people like to hike. Some people like to bike ride. I like the music. <laughs> and you do some awesome stuff, too. Because I've uh, Did done... you just make music a verb? <laughs> 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 music is everything. I like to it music. Is. I love it. I like to music. I'm music every day. Do you in the music, bedroom. bro? <laughs> yeah, see, you can use it in any context. Do you music, bro? <laughs> I uh, I met Raul um, through the scene in San Diego. Actually, a music festival that we were both playing at, and he needed a ride there, so I gave him a ride. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling nice. Dax the story. You know, it's funny about that. That's just that's that's one of those little like store anecdote that just shows you how broke musicians are and performers are. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get no, out well, there. The thing with me is, I have a, a like a little sports car, and there is some terrain that you have to go through. My car wouldn't have made it. Ah. Uh. And ah. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, dude, my car's not going to make it through that. <laughs> so but it was say- just it was the way it happened, you know. Like, yeah, we were meant to meet. Because we, we were chatting in the car on the way out there. I'm like, hey, this guy's pretty cool. You know? So you guys, have you guys done work together, you and Dirty? Uh, we, we're we working on a little collab that we started and haven't gotten too much further on because he's got sidetracked on a project that's a, a substantial project. And, and I stole you away else. from it by bringing you no, on no. here. And I know you started to get busier, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, I got busy, too. Yeah. But it, it's coming along. But I think it's going to It'll happen. To be continued. It's a good start, for sure. Yeah. Speaking of start, you want to hear some of their tracks? Yeah, let, let's have a listen. There's three tracks on there. Um, I just noticed, just now realized that you gave me 24 minutes of, of audio in three songs. Did I really? There, Yeah, you've well, got it's, it's one pro- 745, yeah, one's like, 8, and one 7. It's like yeah, pro- it's dance music for you. It's progressive Jeez. trance. Yeah. It's a little longer. Okay. Well, Your typical song is, what, three, four minutes? Radio. With for electronic. Radio song, yeah. You have, to have, you have to give the DJ room to mix in and kind of carry out. Yep. So... Do you have like club mixes and original mixes and radio mixes of the same song? No. So your song, for example, is produced uh, as you feel it needs to be for intro. Yes. Um, This might sound a little selfish, but I feel like I do it for myself. And if somebody likes it and signs it, cool. If not, they don't. Just so you know, that's a running running thing that (laughs) happens with all artists that are really making good music is that they don't do it for any reason other than themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my philosophy. I mean, I feel that if you don't do it for yourself, you haven't found your f- true passion. You know? I which really... one? Which track do you want to hear? Uh, let's go with uh, the most recent one, uh, White Walls. All right. So this one is White Walls. Uh, yeah. And it is it a it's a remix? It's a remix of Gabriel and Dresden uh, from the new album. Um, it's being rotated right now. So it might be the first time that a lot of people have heard it. When it comes to... Uh, Is that the one that you are telling me about that you just finished? Yeah. Oh, shit. I haven't yep. heard this. 
Yep. I love that bass. It's all about the bass. No trouble. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get lost.
This is where you the DJ starts mixing in the new song. Yep. And this is where this song dies out, and then the new track that you mix in starts building up. So that song was uh, Gabriel and Dresden White Walls Raul Arak Rios remix, right? No, it's not. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I slipped all over that shit. <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot of words. No, this one's uh, Avenue 44, which uh, it's... Avenue 44? New project, new band, whatever you want to call it. It's three of us. I have to uh, say uh, DJ Elevate. He's been in the scene for a long time. He's he's a pioneer, which I feel very thankful to be part of. And then we have Arthur Schmidt. Um, they both have been in Armin's labels and Marcus Schulz and all the big stuff, <clears throat> which I feel very, very lucky to be part of. So was that a remix or an original? That was a remix. Okay, so I'm glad you gave us a remix, actually, because that's something we should probably touch on. Um a lot of DJs and producers out there go around doing remixes or want to remix. And it's a good way to, you know, when you're performing to get yourself known in the industry uh, because you're offering, you know, something that is popular at the time. So people like it uh, and you're changing it. So it's more dancey or, you know, it reflects your style or whatever you're, what, whatever show you're performing at. How do you go about getting a song to remix like what i mean there's so much music out there like what what's the if somebody wants to do a remix how how's the way to start that it's all about who you know yeah really. so so if you like do you go oh i like that song i'm gonna remix it or is it just kind of an opportunity that, that comes up so if you're starting out um what i used to do you just hit up the label directly how about how about remix contest Remix contest. They're a good way for people um, starting out. Hit up the artist themselves. See if they will sing you the stems for it. And yeah, they'll tell you to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're like, uh, no. But that's the thing. It's up to the person. Yeah. Like I did an Anthony Papa remix a while back. Um, I actually got the stems free on Beatport. And then I sent him the track. And he loved it. Since then, we always chat back and forth. And he's huh. always, you have any new stuff? Beatport. What is? <clears throat> Beatport is uh, kind of like a website where DJs go to... Beatport's a store. It's a retail store. Yeah. Uh, it's been it, it's big for the electronic scene. They have electron all the electronic uh, genres, and they also have hip hop on there as well. And so you can buy tracks to remix. And it's like buy. An iTunes for DJs. Yeah. Is it, there is there also like are there like um, four beat, eight beat, sixteen beat uh, like like loops that you can buy through? Oh that? yeah, yeah. They do those things. Uh -huh. I mean, it's yeah, it's all class. like we release our stuff on there too. It's just reg you release regular songs on there. Huh. Um, but they're they're genre genre specific to to more dance music and and mm -hmm. digital music than they are for bands. Like you can't really get on there if you're a band. It's not the right market that's buying it. But see now you see why I'm not hosting these episodes because I don't know any of this shit. Beatport's <laughs> awesome though. I love working with Beatport. They they have been the first ones to actually cancel their streaming services and go back to just download. So they're really supportive of the of the artists. So support nice. them. Buy your shit from them because it helps the artists out. They pay the most too. Like, they pay the artist a lot. I think it's the biggest website to buy music in general. For dance music, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So what, what goes into, I'm like, again, I'm, I'm stupid in this. So that song, like, what part of it did you remix? Yeah, what's involved in a it's, remix? Can you talk us through, like, the process of a remix? Yeah, I can definitely do that, but it's, it's hard. Okay, so what happens is once you get the parts for a song, you get everything from the strings, kicks, percussions, melody, uh, leads, etc. You get to pick and choose what you want to get out of that as a remixer to turn it into your style. If you listen to the original, it's a beautiful song, but it's a little bit more mellow. We turned it into more of a dance music. You know, we made it a little bit more aggressive, a little bit louder, more um, the bass lines are, you know, jumpier, more, more da something that's more danceable. <clears throat> I mean, it's, how would what, you explain it? That? I've never been asked that before. <laughs> I just go in and no, do my thing. It's good because uh, there's different different ways to go about doing remixes. Sometimes uh, the easiest way is getting the stems like that, right? And you have way more control over what you're doing because you want to put your own touch to it and make it your own style and genre. So there's some stuff you want to change. Like obviously if there's lyrics, you're going to want to use the lyrical content and then whatever else is like the main part of the song, like maybe the melody or lead line, right? But yep. th maybe the drums you want to completely rework and the bass you want to completely rework. Like it's having stems really helps you a lot compared to not having stems and having to try and just you EQ know. shit out and add in. I mean, I, I've, I've, done a, I've done a remix where I literally just take the vocal and trash out the whole track and turn it into my, a whole new track with that vocal. 
Oh. But people know it's a remix because it's the vocal from the other track. Right. Yep. Huh. So it's really up to you. I mean, you can change one thing and call it a remix, but to me, that's a little lazy. Yeah. You got yeah. you to turn it into your style. That's right. And uh, Hof- Hopefully that helped. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you in a couple of years when I figure out how to remix my own tracks. Well, I mean, you could. I mean, you're in the band, right? <laughs> well, I, I I do my own music. I'm not in a band anymore. I do this. So, but I mean, if you could take a Nirvana track and create your own acoustics to it, same lyrics, it it becomes, I guess, somewhat of a remix. Yeah. yeah. It's you know the difference between that's cover songs yeah. and remixes. So the difference between a cover and a remix is a remix you're using uh the the original recording. A cover is that you're recording it everything yourself. So Ah, okay. Yeah, and, and that just comes down to differences in licensing laws. If I had the lead singer of a band singing the song that they wrote and I have my band playing the instruments, is that more of a would that be kind of more like a remix than a cover? Um, it just technically speaking, obviously in the music industry, it's still a cover. Playing it in the same way that he played it, yeah, that's what cover. It'd still be a cover, yeah. So if you but if we it, played it differently and he was still singing along with it, that'd be more of a remix. Yeah, and like, did you I'm change? Just, yeah, I, I, no, sorry. no, you're catching on quick, Turbo. <laughs> 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 you are. <laughs> you're getting slammed today by these guys. <laughs> I, you know? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, not at all. Not at all. Um, it's okay. I could take it. I dish it out plenty. Trust me, I could take it. <laughs> Uh, so did you change the arrangement at all? Um, a little bit. Yeah. We, we, well, I'm working with three guys. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to be honest with you because one person has one idea, they'll do it and they'll send it over and I'm like, okay, let's go with it. And then I create something different. They might manipulate it or not. And then we just, just kind of go with it. So yeah, I mean, the arrangements are, have, have changed. Um, but it was more of sounds that were added to make it clubby. Mm. That's really what it came down to. Cool. So how long was the original song? It's about the same. Same, almost eight yeah. minutes? Or yeah. no, seven minutes? Yeah, it's about the same. Um, it's more of a chill, mellow, melodic track. It's a beautiful track. I love it. Um, that's one of the reasons why we chose to remix um, that track itself, mm-hmm. White Walls. There's a few others that I can't really talk about yet ah. <clears throat> but uh there's two more what, what's your objective in in uh writing a, a song or doing a remix like what's there do you sit there at the start and go this is what i want to do or no achieve I, I never ever ever know what i want to do i just press buttons <laughs> to, I, i'm honest <laughs> Okay, what do you press buttons on? Like, what do you what keyboard? Do you, uh, just a keyboard, like in front of a computer yep. and a so, software. Okay, so for example, this this <laughs> this is this was a more of a mellow song. So the first thing that came to mind is how about something that they can play at the club. So you kind of just go from there. Um, I love to start off with bass lines because you know in the big sound system that's what you feel. At least for me, that's what rumbles in. I felt that in these headphones, like these awesome, yeah. crazy headphones. We need to trade headphones then. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. These are mine. <laughs> Bass is an important element in, yeah. in music for sure of all all types, you know, like it, it makes people move. Is it typical to start with the bass or, is, or the drums? It's or up to the person, like, really. You know, it's up to the person. Um, there's times I, I used to wake up in the middle of the night, have a melody in my head, and I used to record it. Wake up and start off with the melody. You know, sometimes you have a bass line. Sometimes I'm out at the club and you hear a certain song, but it kind of influences a different type of bass line that relates to it. And it comes to your head and you just need to record it at the moment because you'll forget. That's me. That's me with drum beats like regular. Like I, I'm, I'm also a percussionist myself. So I've done that before. Nice. My neighbors don't like it when I like, wake up <laughs> at three in the morning. And I'm like, oh, I got to try this drum beat out. Shut up. <laughs> but see that's perfect exactly what you just did or now you just record that yeah and you just wake up to that and you it kind of brings back what you were thinking about it was always like something i had in my head creative process or yeah like i, I record it and then it, it just comes to you as you're as you're going yeah you kind of feed you kind of feed off yourself until you get writer's block <laughs> and, then wah, that, wah. and then you call a friend <laughs> that's one good thing about working with other people though is that it helps you with ideas and, yeah you know get get down the line like for myself i get distracted and i go off on tangents and stuff and i got like 
And next that's... thing you know, it's a different song. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll save that one for later and we'll yeah. go back to this one. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's, it's, I think we all go through that. And I think that's what's amazing about working, especially with my, uh, my friend Arthur Schmidt. We, we just feed off each other, you know? You create something and then I turn it into something else. And then by the time I hear it, after I send it to him, it turned into like something else. You so know, we- I gotta, I gotta add into that. Uh, I've only recently, in like in the last couple of years, learned how to play with others, um, and it, it's very important. But you can't force it. Like if you, right. even if you want to work with somebody really, really bad to try and get their sound mixed with your sound, like even in, in a rock format, it, you can't force it. It has to be there. And absolutely, actually, I recently just started a track with Dax here about what. The quiet guy like in the corner? Like a month ago? <laughs> like a month ago? Yeah, it's about. it's been about a month. I don't think I've ever started a track and went so far so fast. Yeah. This guy, I think, has it down for sure. And you it, calling yourself getting, a noob. There. Well, you know, it's like I, <clears throat> I, I'm i new to... I've been DJing for four years, and I don't have like a... I don't play any instruments or anything like that. I just know I have it here. I've got music in the family, and, and I started DJing. And obviously, the the next progression is to make the music that you DJ. And I've had a lot of success DJing and multiple genres of EDM all over San Diego. He's international now. <laughs> yeah, in, in Mexico and that sort <laughs> yeah. of thing. So, Tijuana. <laughs> so you know, I think my basis for 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 coming up with the track is is like I think of it from a DJ's perspective. When when this track drops at this point in a set. This is what the reaction is going to be, um, I, and I hear sounds. And it's, you guys were—I was going to chime in there for a second, but you guys were talking about. See, I didn't bring him for no reason. <laughs> you, you guys are going to talk about the the remixes um, and taking out certain vocals and that sort of thing. And I do that with uh, with I make DJ edits for when I DJ at clubs. And what I'll do is I'll take a track and I go, "Great, I love this five minute song, but I don't want the five minutes. I want two. And I'll cut that song up myself in my software and then and then re-download it for myself. And I use it as my own personal edit for this, this situation. And I do that with... What, what's the copyright laws on, on well, doing that? You can't release it on your own right. and um, you know, profit off it. But if you want to play it in a club, it's up to you. The club, you the club, the is, the club is going to have the... Uh, as can all, be Yeah, they're going to have all those things to do that. Um, but what I find is is like... I may take three songs and and cut them into pieces and use all three pieces into something new. I may use the the build up of one song with the 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 melody or the vocal of another song, and then I may s- switch the drop uh, to a completely different track. And and in that combination of things, somebody in the in the EDM world in that crowd is going to hear something they ain't never heard before in that combination of things. Um, so it goes back to being unique and. Yeah, to me, apart. EDM is all about ecstasy. That, I mean, <laughs> that's that's what it was. That was my. I'm I'm not bullshitting. That was my only influence. Shit, I just admitted to doing ecstasy. Um, but that was my only entry into EDM, you know. And so to me, it was just all about the feel, and I never really delineated the separation between the emotion and the creativity that goes behind it. Well, that's it. You know, uh, on that subject, real quick, like, I've never done any drugs of any kind i've never smoked weed i've never i've never smoked a cigarette I've, you know i've drank that's it your that's mother's all. dream yeah exactly <laughs> and, and you know so, my mom wished that she could say that about me well, be, being being in that this is the guy my, my friends warned me about well, that's the thing is being in that <laughs> being in that environment and coming up in the in the dj world and sitting in green rooms and watching plates of coke being passed around and yeah. and just mm-hmm. and, and avoiding it all you know it's it's, and it's only because pills. Yeah. I just love the I love the music, you know, and I actually like when I started this whole thing, I just wanted to become a better DJ and I wanted to become better that way. And uh but you see that though, and I yeah. see like I can see that that this song can elicit that response from somebody who's in a different world of their own head. And you see that in electronic music. And I don't think there's a word for that. It's called perspective. And being in and honestly, your perspective as a DJ helps you create music and being able to like look at somebody and see how they are 
reacting to your music you can tell and if you if, if you have the insight you can actually feel it yourself right and then you can transfer that and then write to that like yeah. i do that with my songs as well yeah absolutely it's i think that's you know music in general my, my absolute favorite song of all time is disintegration by the cure the cure is my favorite band of all time mm-hmm. and which is not you know it's electronic influenced but it's still a, a band yeah it's that, that indie pop from the 80s but yeah. i listen to electronic music all day, every day. Like I rarely will listen to anything else but electronic music, especially when it comes to like techno is my, my thing. Techno is my yeah. thing. But, you know, I listen to electronic music all the time. And that started with Robert Miles' children back in 1995. That's, that's where that really started, like long time ago. See, to um, me, and I'm sure a lot of musician fans and probably a lot of people listening to this episode right now, there's only one classification of electronic music, and that's EDM slash techno. <laughs> you know, and you're telling me there's genres like sub genres of oh, EDM. Yeah. I've never knew that. Oh, I didn't it's kind of like rock. Yeah. There's classic rock, indie rock. There's mm-hmm. alternative metal. rock. And yeah, punk and the rock dance music and... scene, people get like super hardcore about oh, it yeah. too. They're like, "Don't call my music progressive yeah. house." Yeah, te- you know, techno. Techno is not EDM. Techno is techno. <laughs> you know, it's like, yep. <laughs> it's just like even with EDM, people are all offended because yeah. they're like, "I don't make EDM. Dubstep, I make house music." Dubstep yeah. is not techno and but at the end of the day trap music EDM. is not techno yeah. Yeah. electronic dance music that's just yeah. a g- general term but it's, for yeah, it's, it's music created everything. electronically through some sort of computer based DAW you know, yeah. that's yeah. really how, how it boils down what to do you but use what do you I, I have Ableton and yeah. that's what I use for um, to make all of my DJ edits and again from the production standpoint I'm learning and so that's why I had reached out to Raul to you know kind of help coach me like, you don't need my help I, I know <laughs> I know song arrangement as far as like Everybody I know. Needs help. I know you know in dance music, eight bars is the is where things happen, and so you know the arrangement of a song and 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 uh, the breakdown and the build up and that sort of thing. But when it comes to like like the the musical aspect of it, the leads, the chords, and that sort of thing, that's the part that that I'm really trying to learn. And I'm never going to release anything unless I'm 100 percent satisfied with where it's at which is probably why it's taking me so long to actually decide to like jump in it full force it's you got, should have brought got, some of your stuff well it's got almost like the th- i didn't know it was going to be the case but I, <laughs> I got i got it's got like 30 we passed the mic to this guy and he won't shut up now no, yeah. I'm <laughs> well it's got you know that's the thing is it's like i didn't know that that was going to be like when raul reached me like coming here i didn't know that you know we were going to just jump in like you know like this but um, that's, <laughs> that's, how, I, that's how we do it here at the Dusty Futon. Yeah. I like it. Well, that's the thing is, I'm you know I've taken a lot of um, of uh, influence from him and where he's going, and that's why I think you know the next step for us to get to the next level is just to produce good music. Yeah, I think really we good. should hear another another track. Yeah, let's listen to another, another track. Let's what do we got it. Here? Which one we got? So the next one is gonna be the kind of relates to the last track. Um, Won't let you fall. And that's one of yours. That's my original. Okay. So this track is. Raul I Rock Rios won't let you fall. You know it's funny. I don't think I've ever heard this track. I think you have. I don't I don't think I have. Right away as a percussionist, I like those drums. <laughs> cool.
One thing I noticed is these actually go by rather quickly for because it's so intense. It's just like next thing you know, it's already we're two minutes in. Bit sound I hear at the yeah. top. Dun, 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 yeah, the bass line. Yeah. There you go. 
Well, shoot, I'm sure you can teach me a lot about rock. <laughs> yeah, I can teach you a lot about editing. That's what I can teach you about. Yeah. Good. good. And Molly, apparently. No. <laughs> I only did that a few times. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 the guy that gets the random dr- the random drug test from my company, you know, like that yeah. my corporate world job. So you can't even smoke pot to chill. I can't even smoke cigarettes if I want it. We're a tobacco free company, so they Whoa. Do. Yeah, they yeah, test. We're for that. staying off of that topic. I don't want to bitch too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the end of a Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> so, um, what sort of elements do you find are important when you're producing uh, an electronic song? Hmm. Definitely, my biggest thing when I hear electronics, like music, bass line. Yep. That's the biggest one for me. Like, you want to feel the music, not only melodically, but, you know, the lower end of the frequencies. We were talking during the song, you used an 8 bit sound. For your baseline on this one, around there, yeah, yeah, I created that one actually. Um, it's whatever I'm feeling at how, the moment. How you do know? you make? How do you like? How would you have gone about making a baseline or that one that you made? Do you? Do you I like a lot of gringy sounds. So you do know? you use VSTs or do you? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, and I like you, to actually. <clears throat> sometimes I'll use a sample and feed off of it and then create my own. So is that is that baseline? Is that layered from multiple different sounds? About three. Okay. Typically, um, when I make a baseline. I use a higher end one, probably grungier. Then there's like a mid bass. Shit, I'm giving out my secrets now. Hey, that's what this is about, <laughs> though. You train, you're helping train junior <laughs> producers <clears throat> like me. Yeah. How to <laughs> you tell? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. So how would okay. you like? Uh, God, I don't even remember your name. <laughs> Paradox. <laughs> Paradox. <laughs> Paradox. <laughs> that was close. That was close. It's all good. <laughs> all good. How do you? How would you make a bass line? Well, you know the, the stuff that I have made. That like, so I have about I have the one track that Raul and I worked on together. And I have three others that are that are bulkly compile i just need to really yeah focus on them um then yeah you midi keyboard we're using a vst um you know you can create a, a baseline that way and, and it's really quite it's like a pretty amazing what you can do with with what starts off as a piano note that turns into this baseline and you're like yeah. what how the hell did i get here on there and it's uh it's a pretty it's a pretty cool process. Yeah, it's a pretty cool process yeah. overall. But I'm still learning. But that's how I would do. I would I grab a sample. And there's tons of them out there. Chop it up into pieces. Put it together. Um, get something I like, and then kind of build off of there. I'm, you know, I, that's how I would do it. Now, Splice so. is a, a website that ha- uh, hosts a bunch of samples and producer samples and stuff that are licensed for you to use. Uh, so be careful yeah. though. One thing is that if you go around just sampling everyone else's music, that that's like copyright material. And you yeah. can get in trouble for it. Yeah. So especially plenty. from the person who created it. Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing is, you know, uh, there's so in the electronic music world, there's so many people that create bootlegs, which is an unauthorized remix yeah. of a, somebody's track, and um, that may be a great way for you to get known. Um, you know, breakthroughs. Like, there's a lot of guys that did that 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 created this bootleg of of a specific song, and it was just better than the original, and they and they made it work, and then. You know, if you get to a point where where that kind of blows up, then sometimes you don't get to be able to make that song anymore, yeah. <laughs> or you don't get to be able to play that song out. You know, that's you'll get the asked, shoot first, ask questions you know, later. Yeah, philosophy. you know. But hey, you know, that's the thing is sometimes uh, you know a I good have a way to go about doing things. Um, uh, some of the artists on on my label, like Tesh Pacania, for example. Go ahead, drop your, he's net, not, your label again. Noise Cartel Records. There you go. And Tesh uh, makes a lot of covers of electronic music. And that's not something that a lot of people do because they normally remix and that sort of thing. But he remakes the whole song and re-records everything in his own style. And then if there's vocals, he'll get another artist to sing on it. Like he did uh, a, re- or a cover of Blink-182's Adam song. And he got uh, another one of our artists, Kramer Creative, to sing the vocals for it. So we were able to release that on the market, you know? Yeah. Because there's uh, um, just licensing laws that you can... You can basically buy a cover license, and uh, you're allowed to release that. And <laughs> there you go. And uh, that's original probably artists, cheaper than doing. A- well, the original artist gets paid royalties for all the plays, and there's difference in like uh, for streaming platforms, they'll 
they pay your mechanical royalties to the original artist. So it doesn't cost you anything if you're going to want to release it on a streaming platform. Mm -hmm. um, it only costs you for license. You can get a license like the licensing company we're partnered with does love them for like 12 or 15 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And that, you know, there you go. Bang. You can release it. Um, for downloads. You have to pay uh, an advance for the downloads. And basically, you go how many downloads you want. You can do like five. You can do 500, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you a price at the industry rate. So if you want to do like, you know, 50 downloads or something, then it might cost you $20. And then you get to that amount and you just buy another 50 or whatever, you know? So, um, and that's, people don't even like download stuff that much anymore. It's all streamed. So yeah, yeah. you might not, you might get five downloads and it doesn't even matter. Well, yeah. So. And I think in the industry right now, the, the, everything is geared towards getting known to play shows. Cause that's where mm -hmm. the money's at. The, the money's yeah. in the show. It's, um, uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, which is uh, kind of funny because yes, yeah, with when it comes to rock music, you don't really make money at a show except for selling merch. That's the thing too. Yeah, like especially here in San Diego, it's very hard to get paid as an artist because there's so many artists working for free. Yeah, oh, yeah. but that's also yeah. reflective of what you hear and what you get too. So yeah, yeah, you um, pay for what you get. You do. You really do. But John, you were talking about dance music taking a long time. Like they're like eight minutes, seven, yeah. six, seven, eight minute tracks and stuff, and then. Uh, you mentioned that it goes by pretty quick, actually. Yeah, well, that's the thing I've noticed. Like uh, back in my my days of having fun and learning about, you know, DJ me. Have you guys ever heard of DJ Euphoria? No, no. Okay, no. see, that's how shitty my my taste in EDM <laughs> and techno is. This was from like the early two thousands, and they remixed that blue blah blah dee blah blah die song. Oh, okay, once. more yeah. the pop. Yeah, exactly, and. Um, and so I, I, I do remember those albums that I did buy at the flea markets where, <laughs> where actually they, they went by quick, especially if you enjoyed it. Yeah. And they're like, like you said, eight minute, nine minute, 12 minute songs. Well, look at, look at Woodstock. It was huge. Thousands, if not like a quarter million people. I'm still trying to figure out where this connection is. <laughs> because whenever they went up there, the bands and played. They would have a guitar rig for like four minutes straight. Yeah, you know, and it just took them. It's about taking the people into a journey. Wow, so deep, man. <laughs> that's that, that, that's what I was opening up for right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it is with it's uh, dance music is a little bit different. Um, a lot of it has vocals. A lot of it doesn't have vocals. Some of it has vocal hooks. Like uh, the song we played of yours right there had a vocal hook. Yeah. And it, he did a lot of different things with it. Um, and you can make, you know, you can make it effective to carry people and take people away and get lost in the music. And that's, that's when it, the song doesn't seem like it takes that long. You know, mm -hmm. a lot, that's why a lot of people who are into that, that scene, um, do take drugs is because <laughs> it stops, you know, it stops you from preventing yourself from going with the music and you, it, you get lost in the music easier. Yeah, uh, it makes it more of a kind of a carnal, natural uh, uh -huh. feeling rather yeah. than overthinking the Look things. At, yeah, like one of Jimi Hendrix sets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? When he's playing the guitar for a straight three, four, or five minutes, and everybody's just lost. Yeah, he's yep. just screaming on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. that's what it's about. It's about the journey. Yeah. that's the way. I, I and you and you it. can you know you can. I mean, don't say I'm not saying take drugs and stuff like that. But. <laughs> <laughs> you just the dusty futon does not condone no. drug use <laughs> um never you you can get into that that state yourself like yeah just with your mindset like mm -hmm. paradox right here was talking about that earlier you know you don't it's he doesn't true. take drugs but he knows how to get into that state to communicate well, think, to the I people think with with uh with edm in general for the most part like it's just something that it hits you and you just can't shake it you know mm -hmm. it's like i don't yeah. know it's like it's probably the same way with i my like my my uh my daughter's was at one point really big into uh like metalcore deathcore like like the screamo type type of <laughs> yeah. i said yeah. i'm a rocker not a yeah <laughs> well but she was like she was like like that was that just grabbed her and in and i was like I, that's the only thing i can liken it to it's like sometimes you just hear something and you just like that like that's i just want more of that yeah and that's just what happens in i'm that way with sex electron hey <laughs> we're all i think we're all like that and chocolate <laughs> wait do i sound like a chick all right i'm shutting up so like it's even to the point in australia right now they just introduced the government funded uh pill testing at festivals because people are going to go and take drugs at festivals anyway so they're making it safe and you can actually go there with your pills 
and go to the little booth and they'll test it for you to make sure that there's nothing bad in there and you get what you're think you're getting and I, when you first said that i thought you were talking they're gonna like make everybody who walks into a festival piss in a cup no 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 <laughs> <laughs> well san diego kind of had that um i haven't seen it lately but it was actually called dan safe yeah it was just a little booth do you remember that they still have dan safe i think i think they still do but i think uh whoever throws the party has to contact them yeah they do like like a vendor mm-hmm. so to speak but yeah i remember like they were just people go up there and make sure that you're safe and kind of go from there Cool. Yeah, I've seen some crazy Don't shit get out of control. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't do drugs. Hey. Unless it's legal. There. <laughs> hey, hey, in San Diego, everyone's allowed to smoke weed now. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Do you have anything coming up? I have uh, a festival that I'm really looking forward to in August 25th. It's supposed to be huge. What's that one? <laughs> It's called, uh, as of now, it's called uh, um, Europa. Are you as playing at Europa? Now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Europa is a pretty big festival. It's a huge Europa. Um, August 25th. Where at? And actually, Dax is going to be playing it himself. He's going to oh, be nice. in Campo. Yeah. Right on. Campo. And uh, how do they get tickets for that? It's very, it's very fresh. So um, things are still in the work. I'm actually part of the event. Okay. To help make it happen, I'm being one of the talent. Um, I don't think the links up yet. So yeah. where where can we uh, find you on the internet besides the I gay porn sites? Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rock I on stage. <laughs> I didn't bring my links, but I mean, um, for the most part, if you just Google Raul I rock Rios, it's I'm the only one. He comes up. I R O K. Yeah. Yep. Are okay. Thank you for that. That's like that's like poor it's Mystic Pete missed it. That's out. like bad language. <laughs> when someone says, "Hey, you doing all right?" I are okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Thank you. That's a good way to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah. I have my moments. Uh, <laughs> do you have a Facebook and an Instagram? Uh, I sure do. What are they? How do you look it up? I don't fucking know. Uh, okay, we'll get those. And I are okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have the links. Well, it's okay. I'll tag you. I'll find uh, you and he's, tag he's you in still, this. He's still trying these. to learn that stuff. Dude, yeah, I'm he, still trying to learn that find, shit. You can find me at Paradox, P-A-R-R-A-D-A-X on all platforms. There we go. Twitter, Instagram. See, that's that's the simplified Facebook. part. I'm, yeah. I've, I have that too. Like Dusty Futon, you can find it anywhere. The only one that's different is Facebook is the Dusty Futon, oh. but everywhere else it's just at Dusty Futon. And I'm at Big John SD, no H. If you just, <laughs> if you just tag... Not tag. Punch in uh, Raul Iraq Rios um, Instagram. Yeah. It'll pop up. Cool. Yeah. SoundCloud, it'll pop up. Rock on. Yeah. Same thing. Before, I rock on. You get to see. <laughs> Same thing. We... I'm full of puns, by the way. That's it's like my <laughs> that's side good, thing. That's good. It's like, yeah. It's my day job, so I'm not going to quit it. There you go. <laughs> I said that line for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get us out of here before I make too much of a fool of myself. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for joining us. Thank, thank you, you for, for having really us, Really appreciate man. the you. information you shared with us and production tips and everything like that. Uh, we're really, really trying to help out uh, independent artists to make their way in the industry and do the right things instead of you know putting all this shit out there that's causing everyone to go broke. <laughs> 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 so uh, Raul Arauc Rios and uh, Paradox, uh, this is the Dusty Futon. We'll see you next time. Peace. Support Peace. independent music. Boom. Thank you. Shaka those guys were just too much fun to chat with. Thanks again for coming out to the Futon, Raul, I Rock Rios, and for bringing Paradax with you. Big thank you to Dirty Disciple of Noise Cartel Records for taking some time off and hosting this episode. I'm Big John, your co-host and engineer. And make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify, TuneIn, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you can find us. Go check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the dusty futon if you'd like to support the dusty futon directly we will be offering behind the scenes access and many other features for a small monthly contribution you can also go to dustyfuton.com where you can hear every episode ever produced of the dusty futon and don't forget to check out backstage360.com for some incredible information and editorials about bands coming to san diego and all over the country i hope you enjoyed this episode of the dusty futon a dusty futon llc production And we will see you next episode right here on the Dusty Futon.